the ultimate soldier, a mercenary group. This doesn't feel real. The world I grew up in is like a completely different dimension. It's like one's non-fiction and the other sci-fi. There's no way that you can even compare the two. That's how different this is. That was how I s saw things as just an ordinary person, but then I see. Never imagined I would hear of the name Fenrir in a place like this. Huh? You recognize it? Naturally. The Fenrir Mercenary Corps is a collection of battle crazed warmongers. But they have their uses, and they always get the job done. That's worth remembering. This is all part of the world I'm totally removed from the one I lived in. Hmm. I have to say, I'm intrigued. Every rumor I've heard of says that Fenrir is already. Found it. Whoa! I feel like our hero is becoming a bit player. Bit player and bit player is becoming our hero. Ah, it's you. Well, what? Huh? What have you got in your pretty little hands there? What? Uh oh, you found you found her personal file. So what if I did? Hey! Don't Come freak out on, on me. Now. I'm not gonna hold it against you or anything. In case you were wondering, I don't hold it against Kyoko either. You know she stole it and hid it. After all, there's no rule against stealing, is there? But I can't forgive. Who I can't forgive is Miss Ogami, who broke the rules and busted the headmaster's room into the headmaster's room. Maybe I'll drag her corpse out here and slice it up and devour it. Where's our omnivores, you know? What? Are the rule violations really so unforgiving? You're quite adamant about those regulations, if you hmm. Of course I am. A part of school life is built on dedication and organization and order. Which is why even I, as a school headmaster, have to follow regulations myself. Oh, so you're saying you have to follow your own rules as well? Of course. Absolutely! I can't have you complaining about how unfair it is and all right now, can I? Hmm. In fact, on that subject of fairness, would you like to know something interesting? Interesting. <laughs> it's about the one writing all the rules. They're actually one of the participants in the, this killing game. I don't think I ever actually told you how many participants there actually were, did I? Hmm. I was thinking, I should probably clarify that. Hey, um... When you all first got here in the main hallway, way back when, there were 15 people there, right? I think the, that first meeting may have led on a, a little misunderstanding among you all. A misunderstanding? Are you saying... In other words... That's right! There actually wasn't 15 of you. Yes, indeed. The total number of students taking part in this killing game was actually 16. 16, then. Yukuro Ikusaba. The 16th student lying hidden somewhere in this school. The one they call the ultimate despair. Watch out for her. 16th student, Yukuro Ikusaba. She's part of the school life. So the one making all the regulations is. Why? Why? Huh? huh? Did you say something? <laughs> Why are you telling us this? Hmm. Oh well, because, <laughs> like I told you, this killing game is desperately popular. You wouldn't believe the ratings. And since we've gotten so many viewers now, I wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page. I don't want to wake up to a hurricane of complaints and hate mail, you know? Yes, indeed. Makes sense. Well now. Okay, that's all for now. That's all you get for now. Oh, actually, I do have some revenge to get. So I have an extra bonus for you. Revenge. I want to get back at that sneaky Miss K Kirigiri. So I'm going to share a little secret with you. S seriously? Hey, um... You know how she wears those stupid gloves? Day in, day out, all the time? Well, don't tell anyone I told you, but... She wears them to cover a bunch of hideous scars that she doesn't want anyone to see. What? <laughs> okay, now that's all I've got for you. Hmm. Kyoko wears those gloves to cover up a bunch of scars? Wait. So on the back of her hand. That tattoo. Wait, but no. Ankuma specifically said they were scars, right? And that's why Kyoko wears the gloves to hide the scars. Which means. That those fake nails on that corpse. Hmm. Are you thinking about Kyoko again? Hmm? What? Forget about her. What matters right now is uncovering one who must trap. His trap? Such ignorance. God, you must. 
God must really hate it, have hated you to make you so dull. Don't you remember what Monokuma just told us? He said that there were 16 students, right? Which means Makuro was a student here. Obviously, Monokuma was trying to tell us that Monokuma is the one creating the rules to this game. But why would he tell us that? Why now? He said he wanted to make things clear so there won't be any complaints later? But the mere fact that he would say that proves that Monokuma is connected to this case. That's why Monokuma revealed the existence of the 16th student. He needs to make our investigation fair. Makuro is related to the case? It's certainly Perhaps possible. she's the one who killed Kyoko. What? Hmm. That would explain why we have uh, to have the class trial, wouldn't it? If she's a student and she killed someone, that would make her part of the kill at school's killing game. Makuro is the killer? She killed Kyoko? Hmm. Anyone would have been able to come to that conclusion, don't you think? In fact, that's exactly what I thought from when I first began the investigation. What? But based on what Monokuma just told us, I've changed my mind. It's all clear now. Nakuro I Ikusaba is not the culprit. Huh? But what makes you say that? Hmm. We thought Makuro, the ultimate despair, was the mastermind's true identity. But if that's true, Monokuma's behavior makes no sense. Why would the mastermind go out of their way to reveal themselves to us? That's a good point. So in other words, Makuro giving us information that would raise questions about her would or would be bold, to say the least. It makes more sense then to assume that Makuro isn't the culprit. So that's the trap. They want us to suspect Makuro and, and come to the wrong conclusion. Hmm. That's what makes sense to me. The way you say it, so definitely, it definitely seems to be possible. But if that's really true, if Makuro isn't the killer, then who is? Hmm. Well then, I believe our work here is finished. Let's move on, I'm sure that there are other places in need of investigation. I should find out if that key is actually, uh, if that key and the dojo are, really are connected. Let's go. Well, are you coming? Oh, hold on. Sorry, I got very thirsty all of a sudden. Man, this, this recording is going on, or this stream is going on for a little long. <sighs> Sorry about that. Alright. There are wooden lockers here. And the wood block keys are just like those super traditional public bathhouses. Looks like the key we found in Kyoko's room really does go to one of these lockers. I see. Okay, do you see the locker on the farthest to the right? Very strange. That's the only one that doesn't have a key in it at the moment. You understand what that means, right? I should probably use the key on that we found in the locker, right? right. Well, just try it. Alright. Took out the wood block and inserted it into the metal lock, and... The locker eagerly accepted the key and opened it. There are arrows in here, and it looks like there's ten in total. <laughs> Looks like they're made of titanium, which means they're quite strong despite how thin they are. Of course, without a bow, they're nothing but strong little sticks. Strong sticks. Oh, there's something else inside the locker. The watered up ball of duct tape. I wonder what that was what this is used for. Is that a, a blood stain? If that is if it, if it is. That means it's surely related to the case. This duct tape is related to the case somehow. But how could it possibly be involved? Hmm. I think that's all the locker has to offer for now. Is something very wrong? Strange. It's very odd, don't you think? The locker was hiding items that were clearly related to the case. But how did the key to the locker wind up in the victim's room? Why? Or perhaps. The yeah, yeah. Hmm. Forget it. Come on. We need to continue to our next location. Huh? What next what? location? There's something I we need to look into. We need to do a little more research on Fenrir. Fenrir? You mean the mercenary group that Mak uh, Makuru was part of? But how are we supposed to find out about that? Isn't it obvious? Where in the school would you go to do research or something? Are you talking about the archive? That's right. The archive has all kinds of info that general 
public doesn't have access to. We only have so much time before the trial begins. Let's hurry. I believe there was a file related to Fenrir somewhere over here. The archivist seemed to know the archive like the back of his hand and went straight to the shelf in the back. Hmm. Ah, here we go. He quickly returned with a file in hand. I see. Take a look at this. Um, I have no idea what it says. What language is this? Hmm. How did you make it all the way through high school without learning a single word in French? Um, I'm pretty sure most high schoolers can't speak French. Well, whatever. I'll read it for you, but I expect to be—I uh, expect you to repay your debt in a, a hundred times over. A hundred times? Isn't that kind of extreme? Fenrir is an elite fighting unit based out on the Middle East. Unlike military contractors, they are a fierce group of soldiers who engage in direct combat. They claim that a single member is equivalent to an entire company of regular soldiers. Just like Fenrir, the Wolf of Ragnarok, their mere presence, is enough to strike fear into an enemy, uh, into the heart of an enemy. They have been involved in countless military battles and operations, most of which are highly classified. However, some time ago, they completely ceased all activity. At present, they, their continued existence cannot be confirmed. They are unconfirmed. Uh, there are unconfirmed reports that key that the key members of the group were all neutralized. Rumors indicate that they were killed to keep them all from revealing the many state secrets they'd acquired. Some, however, believe that uh, there was a mounting in internal bleh, internal tension within the group, and they simply imploded. What? What is it? This all just sounds like some kind of alternate reality. <laughs> well, it isn't. This is our reality. The only reality. These people are a part of our world. Their battlefields aren't much different from our lives here. An in unpredictable, unimaginable world. Okay. That's what makes it all so exciting. Exciting is definitely isn't the word I would use. So, did anything jump out at you? This may be your last opportunity to learn about Fenrir. Now that you mention it. The report said something about the name Fenrir comes from, right? That's right. It said Fenrir is the Wolf of Ragnarok. Speaking of which, would you like to know something interesting related to that? To show that you're the member of the team, each soldier jo that joins the squad will get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere on their body. What? They've got a tattoo of Fenrir? Could that mean... Okay. This should be easy. But the problem is... Time is utterly silent, and yet it constantly assaults us. Organisms, the Earth, natural phenomena. It damages us little by little until the end. You should really think about that. Anyway, it's time to begin the class trial. So, please meet up in the usual spot. <laughs> See you later. Then the time has come. All we can do now is try to uncover the truth during That's the class right. trial. It would seem that way. Let's go. So Kyoko murdered her. But even if we figure out that it's Kyoko and Kyoko doesn't show up, then who could be punished? Hmm. Oh, Biaki and Makoto showed up together? Oh. Where the heck have you two been? You just disappeared without a word. Hmm. You were investigating, of course. How could you not figure that out by this point? Yeah. Makoto's ranked high enough for you guys to go off t together? Just the two of you? Huh? What, are you jealous? Hey. Or are you making up some kind of creepy fantasy for yourself? What? Stop talking and brace yourselves. He'll be here any second. Any second. You'd show up at any time. When I imagined what was about to happen, I immediately tensed up and prepared myself. But... We stood there for a full five minutes waiting for something weird to happen. And then five minutes became ten. Why? What's going on?
going on? Why hasn't Makoto showed up yet? Could it be? Maybe your dad again? Hmm. What should we do? Should we keep waiting here or? <laughs> or what? <laughs> Jesus! Yeah. Ah, did I scare you? Come on. I demand an explanation. Why did you waste my time and make me wait like that? Hmm? Hmm? I made you wait. You've got it all backwards. You're the ones making me wait. Huh? In other words... I'm waiting for everyone to arrive. We can't start until everyone's here, now can we? Hmm? What are you talking about? Everyone is here. We've all been waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but you're wrong. <laughs> but I've been waiting ten minutes now, so it's okay if the I punish the one making us all wait, right? If we all agree it's a violation, I'll arrange the punishment right now. If it's me you're waiting for, I'm here. We heard that voice, and we all spun around to look. Hey. I'm here, and no rule's been broken. Kyoko! Uh. Kyoko, you're still alive? Uh. No, that's a g g ghost! Mm. Stop talking. Mm. If you want to fight, do it at the class trial. You need to save some of the fun for later, right? What? But is this okay? There's no particular penalty for being late. Is that right? I made it here just fine. What school regulations did I violate? Am I wrong? Yeah, so selfish. So spoiled. You're right, there's no penalty officially. But I bet you'll be sorry later. Shing. No, I'll make sure you're sorry later. <laughs> anyway, hustle your butts up into the elevator. I'll just be one step ahead of you. When Monokuma was gone, we all rushed up to Kyoko. Kyoko! Uh. So you really didn't die? Indeed. Of course I didn't die. <laughs> Thank God. I'm so glad you're okay. Hmm. Perhaps. But that's not necessarily a good thing for us. Huh? He's right. Now we gotta deal with a ghost. <laughs> Told you, stop talking. Let's go. Come on, let's just go. Whatever we need to discuss, we can do it during the trial. Ever ever looking directly at Kyoko, Biakia stepped on into the elevator. <laughs> Master, wait for me. Uh, um... Good call. Who knows what might happen if we take too long. But... I'll be happy with it when this trial is over. One after another, we all piled into the elevator. But I, I couldn't help myself. I had to talk to Kyoko before the trial started. Listen, before we get started, I have to ask you. Where have you been this whole time? You used that key of yours to go somewhere, didn't you? So, I went to investigate the second floor of the dorms. Second floor. That's right. There aren't any monitors or cameras there, so I was able to avoid Monokuma completely. Of course, I also missed his announcement because of that. Ooh. I had no idea a body had been discovered. Then, when did you find out? So... Just now. I finished my research and came back down. Just in time to hear the class trial announcement. It took me some time to get over the to go over the crime scene first. I can't go to the trial completely uninformed, can I? So that's why you were late. However... I'm sorry that I kept you all waiting. But if you were on the second floor of the dorms... Then that's what the key you found goes to? Wrong. Actually, to be precise, not quite. In other words, I used Monokuma's secret tool, which can open any locked door in the school. What? Just a second. Hey, what are you two doing? Hurry up before we get in trouble with Monokuma. Makoto. We can get this all. We can go over all this, uh, all the details after we go through the trial. Okay, Makoto. Right now, I, I just want to focus on surviving our current situation. Because this is probably the single most crucial moment so far for me. For her. It's a strange way to put it. Class trial is important for everyone, right? So why would she say it's a crucial moment for her? Goodbye. Well, if that's all. Seemingly unconcerned, Kyoko made her way onto the elevator. Just overthinking what she said, right? Oh, being the last one left, I stepped onto the elevator. And the door slid shut. This time the clunking was loud enough to hurt my ears, and the dread began to consume me once again. I can't Im imagine ever getting used to the metal, uh, mental pressure that comes with preparing for an execution. In that dusty darkness, nobody said a word. I just stood there, silent and still. And after an immeasurable period of time, the doors opened without warning. A dazzling light penetrated every depth of my eyes. But it wasn't an illuminating light of hope. 
It was the blinding light of despair. Oh god. I can't wait. I've been waiting for this. I feel like it's been forever since we got together like this. The time of four pointless jokes and jabs has passed. Let's get on with the show. So the curtain opened for the fifth time. A deadly judgment. A deadly deception. A deadly betrayal. A deadly riddle. A deadly defense. A deadly faith. A deadly clash trial. Increase your focus gauge by two, effective during clash trial. That's nice. Here we go. All rise. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Okay, well, I'll leave the rest up to you. Well then, let's discuss the specifics of the victim. First, we need to clarify who exactly the unidentified victim is. It's Kyoko. There's no other explanation. But Kyoko's standing right there. Yeah, seriously, dude. No, that's a ghost! But she has legs and stuff. Well, that's just because... Seems like the latest evolution in ghost technology. There's a limit to how much ridiculousness I can tolerate. Okay. Honestly, Byakuya, I'm with you there. This is stu too stupid. Um, okay. So I just have to prove that the corpse isn't Kyoko, right? Then let's compare Kyoko's traits to the traits of the dead body. Her traits? I got it! I'm talking about her gloves. They'll give us some insight into the mystery. I'm sure of it. In that case, I think it would be helpful if someone explained why she actually wears those gloves. And would you happen to know the answer? In fact, Monokuma told me. Apparently you have scars on your hands you don't want anyone to see. Oh! You know, now that I think about it, the corpse wasn't wearing any gloves, right? They probably just got burnt up in the explosion. I'm not convinced. The ghost is just trying to fool us all. Jesus Christ, how stupid can you be? Really? I have to explain this stupid? Oh, God. Okay. Gloves before the explosion? Well, yeah! She must have been wearing gloves! Hmm? Shoot! What? That wasn't it? Really? That Kyoko! Okay, improve! The dead body what They got burnt up! Then she was wearing Well, yeah! Because that corpse is- This entire discussion is idiotic. <laughs> Seriously. That Kyoko there is just a ghost! Impossible! Okay, then prove it. Prove oh, she's not a ghost. The dead body wasn't wearing gloves. They got burnt up in the explosion. She was wearing gloves. Well, yeah, she must have been wearing gloves. Really? Okay, I'm starting to get really confused. That Kyoko there is just a ghost. Impossible. Okay, then Oops, prove it. Oops, that's not what oh, I meant to do. A... I meant to do this. <laughs> the dead body wasn't wearing gloves. They got burnt up in the explosion. Then she was wearing gloves before the explosion. 
well, yeah, she must have been wearing gloves. Because that corpse is absolutely Kyoko. This entire discussion is idiotic. Yeah, I don't know what it's asking me, though. Confused. Kyoko there is just a ghost. Impossible. Okay, then prove it. Prove she's not a ghost. Hmm. The dead body wasn't wearing gloves. They got burnt up in the explosion. Then she was wearing gloves for the explosion. Well, yeah, she must have been wearing gloves. Cause that corpse is absolute. This entire discussion is idiotic. I'm starting to run out of ideas. Okay, then prove it. The dead body wasn't wearing gloves. I don't know what it wants. I really don't know what it wants. It's asking a question that doesn't make sense now. Okay, then prove the dead body was. They got burnt up. Then she was wearing. Well, yeah. She... Cause that corpse is absolutely Joker. This entire discussion is idiotic. Okay, then prove the dead body wasn't the they got burnt up and um, she was wearing gloves. Well, yeah, she must have been wearing gloves. Because that corpse is at this entire discussion is idiotic. That Kyoko impossible. Okay, then prove it. The dead body wasn't wearing gloves. I have no idea what it wants. I have no idea what it wants. That Kyoko there is just a ghost. Impossible. Okay, then prove it. Prove she's I have no idea. They got burnt up. Then she was wearing. Well, yeah, she must have been wearing gloves. How? How was that? Whatever. I don't understand why that makes sense, but no. sure, whatever. There's no way the corpse was wearing gloves. Whoever it was. They were wearing fake nails, remember? I imagine trying to wear gloves over nails like that would have been a pretty big pain. You could still do it. That's that's a bad that's a bad logic. Besides, Kyoko wears gloves to hide. That's the first hands. bad logic I've seen so far in this game. It'd be pretty weird for someone who's self-conscious about their hands to wear fake nails, don't you think? Jeez, man, you don't know women, huh? They're complicated like that. If anyone doesn't know women, it's you. Well, That's true. Kyoko, any thoughts? These gloves were custom made to the size of my hands to make sure they don't interfere with my daily life. If I wore fake nails, the gloves wouldn't fit properly. Then that's that. The dead body doesn't belong to Kyoko, which should have been obvious since she's standing right here. Seriously. Okay, so then, who's the real victim? First, we need to figure that out. That's the first thing I said. You're the one who's been dragging us around in circles. He's really starting to piss me off. Uh, I mean, I know who it is, but uh, I guess I have to explain it to everyone else. Because they're idiots. If Kyoko really is still alive, then who died? There's gotta be some way to figure it out. So. The face was scorched beyond recognition, and there wasn't any description in the monochroma file. Well, if we can't identify the body... Then there's nothing else we can do, right? If Kyoko really... Then who does? There's gotta be so. I don't think so. The face was scorched beyond recognition, and there wasn't any description in the mon... Well, if we can't identify the body... Okay. There is still the right hand, so thanks. Jeez, I can't believe I'm running this all off of one heart now. One clue left because of that stupid bad. Ah, uh, whatever. What? For real? If you're lying, you'll die a cruel and unusual death. Cruel and unusual death? This I gotta see. Hey. She's just being stupid. God damn it, hero. Tell us what you're talking about. The key to figuring out who it was is the tattoo on the back of her hand. Oh, yeah. The design's pretty strange, huh? Is this a dog? Her master must have made her get it to be like, you're my bitch. Seriously? You really did something that humiliating? No, that's not it. 
The identity of the victim is hidden within that tattoo. Oh, really? Okay, that's it. The Fenrir Mercenary Corps. That's the name of the military group Mukuro Ikusaba belonged to. Okay, so... To show that they're a member of the team, each soldier that joins the squad would get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere on their body. Fenrir? Oh, Hangman's Game It? I just have to type in dog. Dogs? Dogs? Uh, why is there not a D appearing? Oh, a wolf. Now I it specifically understand. said dog, though, so go fuck yourself, game. The representation of Fenrir is a wolf. Fenrir, the wolf of Ragnarok. It's from Norse mythology. A huge, world-ending wolf beast. He's the child of the trickster god, Loki. And a female giant. Man, after all this time, we finally got a glimpse of the literary all-star. Seriously. And that means... Exactly. The body we found had a tattoo of a wolf. Which means that person must have once belonged to Fenrir. So it must have been Mukuro. What? Oh, hold on. Isn't she the one that was behind this whole thing? <laughs> you sound surprised, but you're absolutely right. Yes, indeed. The trial this time is to solve the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba. Are you saying the mastermind is dead? And now we have to have a cool last trial? No. It means we were wrong in thinking that Mukuro was the mastermind at all. But I mean, being the ultimate despair seems like a pretty mastermindy title to me. Maybe we shouldn't have been thinking of her as the ultimate despair in the first place. After all, looking at her profile, I didn't see anything that would fit such a description. All it said was that she was the ultimate soldier. If I remember correctly, that other information came from Kyoko. That's what you told Makoto, right? Yeah. So that means Kyoko got it wrong? Mm, who was she? Who was Mukuro Ikusaba? She's been gone this whole time, and when she finally turns up, she gets killed. Usually when there's a scene where an important character dies, it has a lot more detail. So you're saying she wasn't an important character? Which would mean she was the same as us. Just another participant. Then who's the real mastermind? It must have been the Hope's Peak Academy headmaster after all. No, the headmaster has nothing to do with it. But how can we trust that? We already know your information about Mukuro was wrong. My information was not wrong. Okay, okay! We're in the middle of a trial right now. Figuring out who killed Mukuro is first and foremost. Please limit all future prattle, chatter, and chit-chat as much as possible. Fine. Uncovering the identity of the Mastermind will have to wait. But remember this. No matter what happens, we will find out who you really are. I stake my family name on it. I have officially decided to completely ignore all such attempts at provocation. Now then, just so nobody's confused, let me state this one more time for the record. The reason we're having a class trial is because a murder among the students has taken place. Hammer that point straight into your big old brains! What you're saying is that both the victim and the culprit are part of the student body? Um... One of us killed Mukuro? Wait, no! There's a chance that there's some mystery 17th person who's been hiding all along! Nope! There are only 16 students in total that have been taking part in these events! Seriously? Then, one of us killed Mukuro? Who did it? Who's the killer this time? Get a hold of yourself. We've already narrowed down the list of possible suspects. Huh? 
I'm sure you realize who I'm talking about, right, Makoto? Who the evidence points to? I got it! You've narrowed it down to Yoko and me, right? Why do you say that? Allow me to explain. Just after nighttime last night, I went to the garden, so I can confirm that at that point, there was no dead body there. So, the murder must have taken place after I left the garden. However, Hiro, Toko, Hina, and I were in the gym the entire time. The gym? That's right. The four of us were there trying to dismantle Monokuma. The whole time, we were very careful not to go anywhere alone. We even went to the bathroom in pairs. All of which is to say, the four of us all have alibis. The only ones without alibis... ...are me and Makoto. That's why you're able to narrow down the list of suspects. Exactly so. Um... I have something I'd like to say regarding the whole alibi thing. Are you thinking of raising an objection? Well, before that, I just want to try and get a better idea of what time the murder took place. Doing that might reveal some kind of clue. Whatever you want, somebody go ahead and help him out. Me and Byakuya can both confirm that the body wasn't in the garden at... Well, it was after nighttime for sure. I'd say it must have been around 10 o'clock. So the murder must have happened after 10 p.m. Then I guess we can say the time frame for the murder was between then and when we found the body? Oh, but what time did we find the body? The one who saw the body first was Toko, right? And she went to go get the pickaxe. That was around 9 o'clock. I got it! The body must have been discovered at 9 a.m., since that's when Toko went to get the pickaxe. He's right. It had to be around then. So we can be totally sure the murder happened sometime between 10 at night and 9 in the morning. For me, I was already asleep before nighttime hit. So I don't have an alibi after 10 o'clock. But I'm sure I met up with everyone else before 9 this morning. We ran into each other in the dining hall, right? That was around... Oh, yeah! 7.30. I remember checking right before I went in, so I'm totally sure about it. Which means from 10 p.m. to 7.30 a.m., you don't have an alibi. 